Thank you, Jabelle. You're welcome. So Jabelle um, asked about that song, and she goes, would this song be okay without all the Celine Dion screaming? <coughs> I said, yes, that's fine. <laughs> and it's absolutely perfect. So once again, welcome to Riverside Center for Spiritual Living. It's so great to see all of you here on this bright Sunday morning. Uh, this year here at, well, before we get there, let's do, our, let's do our focus statement, shall we? So all together with all the Vs, all the vim, all the vigor, all the velocity, all the voluptuousness, because that's what it's feeling like this morning. It's feeling voluptuous. So uh, with all those Vs, let's say our uh, focus statement, it's right over there on the wall. If you don't already know it, but most of you already know it. So here we go. We embolden people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Now I can tell you about what we're doing this year. So this year is 2020, and in, as we are moving through this year, we are focusing on the uh, theme for Centers for Spiritual Living Worldwide, and that is 2020 Spiritual Vision. And many of you already have your journals to that effect. Yes, woohoo, waving your journals, yes. Um, and there are some more in the bookstore for purchase if you haven't gotten yours yet. But we are working with this theme throughout, throughout the year. I had the honor uh, to be part of the committee to develop the theme for 2020. So what I know is that they're all good. Because I made sure of it. <laughs> so that we can go through this year wonderfully. So the very first uh, month, what we are focusing on is we're focusing on getting grounded. And like I said last year, it's not sitting in a corner, you know, without your electronic devices. But getting grounded is going back to basics and really getting back to the roots and the foundation of um, what it is that we teach here at Centers for Spiritual Living. And as we're doing that, we are reviewing a few chapters from the text that uh, Ernest Holmes wrote, which is the text of The Science of Mind and Spirit. And so this week is The Power of Thought, which you'll find in chapter 8 of that book, if you have that book. And if you don't, we also have those available in the bookstore. There's two shameless plugs for the bookstore this morning, and it wasn't even intended. So there you go. So go see Casey afterward. Um, <clears throat> And so this morning is the power of thoughts. And I loved it when Michelle sent me the, uh, she goes, here's your slide for today. And I'm like, okay. And so there's the brain and there's the heart. And this is from the website, theawkwardyeti.com. And which I just love the name Awkward Yeti. Like, like a Yeti could be graceful, I guess, maybe, you know. But <clears throat> I just think of Bombal Snowman. Um, anyway, <clears throat> how can you act like every day is the best day of your life. And the brain is sipping coffee, right? And the heart's saying, because every day I set a new personal record for the number of days alive. <sighs> so that's, a, that's another perspective, right? So, <laughs> woohoo, woke up on this side of the grass. So there you go. That was my, that's what my grandfather used to say. I was like, how are you feeling? I woke up on this side of the grass. I'm like, all right then. Well, there you go. So, uh, Today we're focusing on the power of your thought, or the power of thoughts. Do our thoughts have power, would you say? Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, thank you. Um, yes, they do. And it could be argued that our thoughts are incredibly powerful, right? Um, because whenever you think any kind of a thought, your body is having some sort of a physiological reaction. All thoughts have some sort of physiological reaction in your body. So <clears throat> if you are thinking happy, lovely, you know, puppy dog thoughts, right? You know, there's all these wonderful endorphins and, you know, all this yumminess, just, you know, and we feel all soft and gooey and wonderful inside, right? When we see our little puppy dog looking at us with eyes of love, right? All that oxytocin kicks in and it's like, oh, this is delicious, right? Or, you know, we turn on the news and we see something that angers us or something that upsets us and consequently we see that and it's like, uh, uh, right? And then all these other like chemical dump happens in our body, a uh, hormonal chemical dump happens, right? And we, perhaps we um, feel nervous or we feel anxious or we feel upset or what have you and our stomach gets into a knot, you know, rather than being in butterflies of love, it gets into a knot, right? So there's all these different um, chemical reactions. That, so every thought that we have 
has some sort of a physiological reaction on our body. Would you agree with that? Yeah? Okay. I mean, that's what that whole movie was about, Inside Out, right? With the little cartoon, the little cartoon characters. It was very cute uh, years ago. So our thoughts are, do have power. And what I would like to postulate here is that directed thought, conscious thought, has more power than unconscious thought or undirected thought. Yeah? No? I see some heads nodding. I, was like, I see some skepticism. Uh, I don't know. Right? And what I mean by that is <clears throat> we can be living our lives and just responding and reacting and responding and reacting and just experiencing whatever we experience and having our reactions to those experiences. Right? And so then we have a physiological reaction to those experiences or we have had patterns or habituation, right, that has led us to believe certain things. And so because we believe those certain things, then our subconscious thought, our unconscious thought is kind of like running our lives, right? You're kind of sitting in the back seat and you've got a driver up there, an Uber driver who may or may not be going where you want to go, right? Um, taking you for a ride, maybe, I don't know, right? Or we can use our more directive thought or more conscious thought to actually sit in the driver's seat and then guide where we're wanting to go, right? And have more control and have more direction over what it is we are wanting, where we're wanting to go, what we're wanting to experience. Would you agree with that? So directive thought, in that sense, is directive thought versus, versus non-directive thought. Here in um, Centers for Spiritual Living, we teach that it's part of the philosophy is it's done unto us as we believe, right? It's not just, we don't have the whole handle on that, or that's not solely ours, but it's done unto you as you believe, it's done unto us as we believe, right? As a person thinketh in their heart, so they are. So as a person thinks, then so they are. Or as Aristotle would say, paraphrasing that, um, that which we focus on, we see. Right? So a couple years ago, maybe it was last year, maybe it was two years ago now, um, I asked you, I invited you as a congregation to toy with that idea of what you focus on, right? And what you see. And so I invited you to look for all the yellow cars in your life for a week, right? And everybody came back and was like, I saw so many yellow cars. I didn't know there were that many yellow cars on the planet, right? Not including school buses. So, um, it, again, it was bringing your attention or bringing your focus or bringing your awareness to that. And once we bring our awareness to that, it's like, whoa, we see so much more of that, right? And so when we're thinking our thoughts or we're being, we have the opportunity, perhaps, to begin to focus and direct our attention, and where are we focusing and directing our attention? And where we focus and direct our attention tends to expand. Where we place our intention and our attention tends to expand. Now, is it truly expanding? I don't know. Or is it our awareness of it that is expanding? Right? If we look at the, if we look at the yellow truck or the yellow cars, right? The yellow cars are always there. You just weren't paying attention to them. You weren't noticing them until something drew your attention, my suggestion, drew your attention to seeing yellow, yellow trucks or yellow cars. And what we also affirm is that when we think of this teaching symbol that's here and here, and we think of the creative process, and we think of the idea of planting a thought, planting an idea, in, or a seed, right, into the soil, which is the creative medium, which is that medium, middle part, that's that thing that knows how to create everything, that does not judge us for what it is that we're choosing to create, but just is that creative medium that works for all equally, then we get form, yeah? It's, we come to the bottom and we get form, we get the plant, we get that which we have been experiencing or that which we have thought about or that which we have, the idea that we have planted into that soil. Same like you would do for any kind of a tree or bush or plant at home, right? This is nothing new for most of you, yes? 
Familiar, yes. And, and. <clears throat> what we know is that it's done unto us as, right? I've talked about the big as. The more you believe, at the time that you believe it is when we begin to then see the demonstration of it, or we begin to see the manifestation of it, or we begin to see the plant, if you will. The more, and to the degree that we believe it. So if you only believe a little bit, you only get a little bit. And by believe, I mean like truly believe, truly embody, not just go, oh yeah, I believe that. Right? But it's a full body, yes, it's a full body believe to the extent that we have that full body embodiment of it or belief in it, then that's where um, we then see that demonstration. So it's done as, it's done to the degree as, right? So what if we thought of it like this? If we are living in this thought atmosphere, this intelligence, uh, this atmosphere of infinite intelligence that knows all, that knows absolutely everything. We talked about it last week. It's omnipotent, it's omniscient, and it's omnipresent. It absolutely knows everything, it knows all, it knows, and it's already given everything that's already been to give. It's already been given, right? There's no withholding at all. So where does that leave us in this process? It leaves us to bring ourselves into alignment with it, with that idea, with our highest good. It leaves us to bring ourselves there into that kind of alignment. And law of attraction isn't, when we talk about law of attraction, we, always, or we often hear, most frequently hear that, you know, we, are, we create our reality, we create our lives, that I think this and it's drawn to me. Uh -uh. We think these things and we bring our awareness to these things and then guess what happens? It's not drawn to me. I'm drawn to it. It already is. Because spirit can only do for you what spirit can do through you. Spirit can only do for you what spirit can do through you. If we are not an open vessel, if we are not a clear channel, if we are not a clear vehicle, I don't like the word channel, but if we are not a clear vehicle or a vessel or a transparency for the divine, the divine can't bring it, the divine can't do it for you because it has to be able to do it through you. So the only obstacles are our own dirty windows, right? We get to clean up our own window to be that transparency through which the light can move through and into form. It has to be able to move through us. So in order to expect anything, in order to receive anything, it is always an inside job. It always must come from within to then be expressed without. But it has to come through within each one of us. So if you want to experience something in your life, you have to open out a way for the imprisoned splendor to escape, right? I've said this many times too. But you have to open out a way so that you can be that transparency for the divine so that the divine can work through you and in your life. We set our own limitations. Yes, we see physical limitations out in the world. Yes. And still, we create our own limitations through the power of our mind. We do. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't have that. Oh, no, they're, they're doing this. They're doing that. Right? And so we have a tendency to limit ourselves. And last week I talked about what if we focus and bring our attention and our intention to the sole idea of God is. The sole idea of God is. Nothing good, nothing bad, just simply God is. The divine is. And when we focus on that, like I said last week, when we focus on the isness, 
then we bring ourselves into alignment with the goodness and the allness and the fullness. And then we are clearly being a transparency for that which is ours to claim. We simply open our hands and receive, just like we sang this morning with that last song, or the song before. I receive. I'm open to receive. I am opening to receive. And it's just a matter of opening and being available and allowing because we've brought ourselves into alignment with that which already is. And then it's the divine's good pleasure to give us the kingdom and give us the kingdom. All things are then added. We simply bring our mind, we bring our ideas, we bring our thoughts there, and then we are drawn to it. We are not drawing it to us. So I have a question for you. <clears throat> if you think about this water bottle that I have, How many of you are wondering if it's half full or half empty? How many of you are wondering what's inside it? It's water. Right? But the question I have for you is, how much does it weigh? How much does it weigh? What? Well, really the weight of it doesn't matter, right? The weight of it doesn't matter. Because if I hold it for just a minute or two, it's no big deal. It holds 24 ounces. So the weight of it really doesn't matter. So if I hold it for a short period of time, there it is. Right? It's not hard. Now if I were to hold it in the same position for an hour, my arm might get a little sore. It might get a little tired. Would you say? And if I were to try to hold this water bottle like this for a full day, my arm might get numb or feel like it's going to fall off even, right? <clears throat> so the same thing goes with our thoughts. And the same thing goes with um, especially those thoughts that challenge us or our challenges in our lives, those thoughts or those ideas or those places where we could feel stuck, right? So if we just hold on to it for just a few minutes, or we just contemplate this thought for a brief period of time, it comes, it goes. We contemplate it for a little bit longer, we might experience a little bit of difficulty, a little bit of pain, a little bit of like, Ugh, right? And if we hold on to it for a really long period of time, then we haven't walked through the valley of the shadow. We've, like, built an encampment, right? Right? So what are some alternatives to the water bottle? What are some alternatives to that? How else could we think of the situation with the water bottle? We could set it down. What else could we do? Switch hands. What else could we do? Drink all the water out of it so it's a little bit lighter. Okay, so it's a little bit lighter. What else could we do? Trust that there will be water when we need it. What else could we do? Put it in my pocket. What else could we do? Let somebody else hold it. What else could we do? Concentrate more on it. Okay. What else could we do? Pour it out. What else could we do? Throw it out. Forget about it. What else? Give it to somebody else. Never have it in the first place. Right? Offer somebody a drink. Okay. Drop it. Right? Be grateful for it. Excellent. So sometimes when we get stuck in our thinking or we get stuck in our ideas and we get stuck that, oh, I've got to hold this for a long period of time and I fail to begin to see options, then we have the opportunity to explore other ways of thinking about it and other options of doing something with it. Yes? For the most part, right? 
So we have other ways of thinking about it, other ways of doing it. And then what do we have? We can make a choice. What do I want to do with it? I'm going to take a sip out of it and I'm going to set it down. Right? <clears throat> I knew that would draw applause. <clears throat> but the same goes for our patterned thinking. We can interrupt the pattern, and the pattern doesn't have to be a negative pattern. The pattern could be a positive pattern, but, you know, it's like, hey, this has brought me this far, and this is a really positive pattern. I really love what happens here so far, but you know what? Here, I want to take it to the next level. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to set my water bottle down because I've got a coffee pot over here, which I don't, but you know. Um, I've got something else over here and I want to move to this now. And I want to move from that. This has been great. This has been wonderful. And now it's time to up level or it's time to move on to something new. So I set down the old and I start a new pattern of thinking. I start a new way of thinking and I move over here and go this direction, right? So. What I know is that's possible for most of us. And what I can also, or it's, it's possible, I would have to say, for everyone. But what I want you to hear, though, is I don't want you to misunderstand that you have to change all of it all at once. In fact, you don't have to change but maybe just a little itty bitty bit. What helps to cause change, what helps to influence, what helps to make the shift simply is an openness and a willingness. You can have this waterfall and flood of thoughts that seems ima unimaginable, right? That just is overwhelming. And by keeping that idea of I'm willing to be free of this, or, I'm open to the possibility of my life being different, that alone, that small drop, that small idea, firmly believed or deeply believed, makes the difference. And it starts the shift. And it starts the cascade of what's possible. And I'm not saying that it happens overnight, right? In this dimension, this third dimension, this physical plane, where we have time and space and we experience time and space, it may take physical time, it may take human time, but that one small idea, the mustard seed, if you will, one of the smallest seeds, the mustard seed, if you will. Placing our ideas and placing our thought there and our attention there and planting that one small seed, given time, produces. So are thoughts powerful? Can you use your thought to change your life? Will you use your thought to change your life? Yes. Sure. <laughs> life can be good, but it can always be gooder, right? Yeah. Always be better. All right. So what I invite you to do today as I end this week is I invite you to go forth from here. Instead of looking for yellow cars this week, look for blooming bougainvillea. All right, look for blooming bougainvillea, right? Instead of yellow cars, look for some blooming bougainvillea this week. See what you notice. See the variety. See the, the beauty in that. Look, so, look for some blooming bougainvillea, right? And begin, we spent most of December, con and then um, the beginning of the year, we at the, toward the end of December, we did the white stone ceremony where you had the new, your new name revealed, if you will, that new word revealed. So what I invite you to do is I invite you to take that new word that you wrote on your white stone and begin to contemplate that. Just make sure that it's put someplace 
where you can see it, someplace where you can focus on it, and begin directing your attention there on that word. Begin directing your thought, your intention there, and allow, and allow, and allow, and see what unfolds. Because what I know is that you will be drawn to it. It doesn't need to be drawn to you. You will be drawn to it. Because after all, you are the transparency for the divine. That's who you are. That's who we all are. So let's open out a way for our imprisoned Sprinter to like dance and sing and have a good time. You with me? Yeah. All right, awesome. Let's have our uh, practitioners go ahead and stand and surround the sanctuary and as, and as well as our core council. <clears throat> and let's enter into a moment of consciousness, a moment of prayer. All right, so I invite you to join me in consciousness. If you feel comfortable in doing so, I invite you to close your eyes and let's turn within. And so right here and right now, I recognize that there is this one divine mind, this one power, this one presence, this one life, this one infinite eternal beingness that is the allness and the isness and the fullness. It is joy, it is harmony, it is peace, it is love, it is life. It brought forth from itself, through itself, as itself, all of creation by speaking the word upon the waters of consciousness. By having the divine idea, and from that divine idea, all of creation was made. And as I know that there is only this one life, then I know that we are all one with that one. It is the very who of who we are. It is the very who of who I am. That right where I am, the power and the presence of this life, this love, this divine is made manifest. I am a transparency for the divine through which the divine light shines into this realm, into this world. I am a transparency for the divine, for the love and the good and the wholeness and the perfection to be made manifest. And as I know that this is true of me, I know that this is true of everyone here. That it is the absolute truth of all. And so I speak a word of blessing and a word of power upon this community this Riverside Center for Spiritual Living, this beloved community who have come together to share and to grow and to deepen and to learn and to practice the principles of spirit, to practice the law of spirit, to practice the love of spirit. That we have gathered here this morning and we gather here on a regular basis to share with one another, to be a way shower, to be a light bearer for each other and for our beautiful city, the city of Riverside. I know that each is a point in consciousness. Each is the center of the living spirit. Each is the center of the divine. And it is through each one of us that love is made manifest. So when we say that love lives here, when we say that we embolden people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love, what we are talking about is we are talking about that gift that is moving through each one of us. The gift of the divine. The consciousness of the divine. Making itself known and manifest and how good it is. How beautiful it is. How perfect it is. And so I give thanks for this demonstration. I give thanks for this manifestation of beauty, of power, of peace, of poise, of love, of harmony, of joy. And I simply release this word into the law knowing that it is already done, knowing that it is already complete, knowing that we are drawn to it. And together we say, and so it is.